all the students today we are going to study frames or the framing in data link layer basically frames are the data units which are present in the data link layer or in other words if i say the data unit at the data link layer is known as frames right and this process of converting data into frames is known as framing so let's get into the details of framing so basically at the physical layer the data transmission involves transmission of bits from the source to the destination so the data that we is transmitted at the physical layer is the raw bits right zeros and ones so this is the data that is transmitted at the physical layer now when this data is received at the data link layer you know that above the physical layer is the data link layer so when this raw these raw bits are transmitted from the physical layer to the data link layer what the data link layer does it packs these bits into frames now data link layer takes the packets from the network layer and encapsulates into frames right so whatever packets it gets from the network layer now what is the network layer network layer is the layer which is present above the data link layer so below the data link layer is the physical layer and above the data link layer is the network layer so whatever packets so the units of data present at the network layer are known as packets so when these packets are received by the data link layer from the network layer again they are converted or encapsulated into frames now if the frame size becomes too large then the packet may be divided into small sized frames it is always taken care that the frames are of normal or smaller size so if they become larger in size in that case they are divided into smaller frames so because of the smaller size frames flow control and error control becomes efficient because of the uh, frame is small then detecting errors would become easier and then correcting those errors would also become easier because it is easier to find mistake in a smaller unit of data as compared to a larger unit of data similarly flow control becomes easier because the amount of data that is received at the receiver's end is smaller and hence it is it will not swamp the receiver so that is the reason that it is preferred to keep smaller sized frames okay then the data link layer sends each frame bit by bit on the hardware basically uh, below the physical layer is the actual hardware through which data is being transmitted so this data link layer sends each frame each frame bit by bit through the or on the hardware so at receiver's end at the other end or at the receiver's end the data link layer which is present at the receiver's end picks up the signals from hardware or rather it picks up in a layman's language it picks up the data from the hardware and then assembles them into frames again so this is the basic uh, diagram which can help you visualize how the sending machine and receiving machine have frames and packets so this is the sending machine if i say packet that means it is present at the network layer you know the unit of data present at the network layer is the packet so at the network layer what we have is called the packet then when it is transmitted down to the data link layer it is converted or encapsulated into a frame <clears throat> so the basic format of a frame is that it consists of three important fields the first is your header second is your payload field and third is your trailer header and trailer we will discuss in detail as of now you need to know that the payload field is that field which contains the actual data that we wish to transmit right so from the network layer to the data link layer and then finally from the data link layer to the physical layer it moves here we have not shown the physical layer because what a layman visualizes is that data is being transmitted directly from one layer to the another layer between the two machines though actually this is not how it works so the data from the data link layer now this data at the data link layer is the frame so it is transmitted down to the physical layer the physical layer we know is connected to the actual hardware from where the raw bits transmit so this is how the transmission is taking taking place from the hardware it moves on to the 
uh, receiver to the receiving machine then at the receiving machine you must be having a physical layer from where it goes again up to the data link layer right again at the data link layer these raw bits are converted into a frame which consists of three important parts header payload field and trailer so then uh, so this is how it is working and then from the data link layer it moves on to the network layer of the receiving machine where it is converted into packet or where it is known as a packet so this task is done in both the machines so uh, in the sending machine also the packet is converted into frame and in the receiving machine also the packet is converted into frame or vice versa so this is how actually the data gets transmitted between two physical machines now as i said we'll discuss the parts of frames in detail so the three important parts that we have discussed are first of all the frame header so frame header contains the source and destination address of the frame now you know we are transmitting all the frames individually independent of each other no frame is bound to choose the same path as the previous frame had chosen so each frame can choose its own independent path so for this reason each frame contains source and destination address of the frame so that you know that where that particular frame is coming from and also it is known that where this particular frame is destined for so that only the machine that uh, it is destined for receives and processes it and rest other machines ignore that frame right so this is a very important part the source and destination address of the frame <clears throat> then you have the payload field which i said is the actual data or the actual message that you wish to transmit and then is the trailer the trailer is at the end of the frame and it contains the error detection and error correction bits so there are certain bits which are used for error correction and error detection what are those bits and how they are implemented this we will discuss in the upcoming videos as of now you must know that a trailer contains the error detection and error correction bits so special bits uh, which are used for correct error correction and error detection then a frame may or may not have a flag right so the frame header the payload field and trailer these three things or these three parts or these three components are compulsory in every frame but an optional field is your flag field which may or may not be there if a flag field is present then what does it represent basically it represents the beginning and end of a frame that is exactly from where this frame is starting and where this frame is ending so that the receiver knows to distinguish between two different frames okay now there are basically two types of framing when we talk of framing that is converting a data unit into frames so there are two ways of doing that one is having your fixed size framing and another is your variable sized framing right now fixed size framing as the name suggests there is a all the frames have fixed size so basically the size of the frame is fixed that means you may will not have more number of bits beyond that particular size and so the frame length acts as a delimiter of the frame since all the frames are of the same size hence the receiver knows that beyond this many bits what we have is the new frame right because all the frames would be of the same size so hence no confusion say for example is uh, we choose a fixed frame size of up to uh, say 100 bits so that means the receiver knows that beyond 100 bits when the moment it goes on to 101 100th bit that means that is the first bit of the next frame so the receiver very well knows that it is only up to 100 bits and beyond anything beyond that is the next frame so it acts as a delimiter of the frame that means you know where the frame is ending so basically because of this it does not require additional boundary bits you do not have to uh, set or you do not have to stuff any boundary bits to let the receiver know that here the frame is ending because the receiver knows that this is the size of the frame and beyond this it will be a new frame right so you do not need to stuff any boundary bits so uh, to help the receiver identify the start or end of a new frame <coughs> 
Next, moving on to the variable size framing. As the name suggests, variable size framing, that means the size of the frames can vary, right? So here the size of each frame to be transmitted may be different and there is no compulsion on all the frames having the same number of bits. So an additional mechanism is required here to mark the end of a frame and the beginning of the next frame because when we studied the fixed size frames we knew that all the frames would be of the same size. Hence it would be easier for the receiver to identify when that particular frame ended. But here since this in case of the variable size framing, since the frames may be of variable size, that means their sizes may vary or in other words, the number of bits in each frame may vary. So you need some mechanism to let the receiver know when a new frame has started and when the previous frame has ended. That is, you need to keep a mark of the end of the frame and beginning of the next frame. Now there are two ways to define the frame delimiters. Delimiters means which help you identify the starting and ending of a particular frame in case of a variable size framing. So what are these two ways? First is your length field, right? So here the length field determines the size of the frame. That means in the frame you have an additional field for the length of that frame which specifies the length of that particular frame. So when the receiver sees the length field, it will identify the number of bits of that frame and any number of bits beyond that uh, bits would be a new frame which would mark the beginning of a new frame. So with the help of the length field, the receiver can easily identify when that frame has actually ended and when a new frame has started. Next is your end delimiter. End delimiter is basically a pattern which is used as a delimiter. So delimiter as I said marks the starting and ending of a frame. So uh, a pattern of bits is used here as a delimiter to determine the size of the frame. right? So if this same pattern is occurring in the payload. Say for example I say that the pattern uh, 0 1 1 in the end of the frame, I put this pattern 0, 1, 1. So every time the receiver encounters this pattern, it will get to know that, okay, these are the, uh, this is the end of my particular frame. So, but it is a possibility that there is a possibility that the same pattern is occurring in the payload, that the actual message, that the actual message may also contain the same bits. So what we do, what do we do in that case to avoid the confusion? And then the two approaches are used. First of all is byte stuffing. What is byte stuffing? A byte means a collection of bits is stuffed in the message to differentiate from the delimiter. It is also known as character oriented framing. That is if you have the same bit pattern in the actual message you stuff some bits in the ending or the beginning of the message so that there is no confusion between the actual message and the delimiter bits. So this proce uh, particular process is known as byte stuffing. It is also known as character oriented framing and another method is your bit stuffing. So a pattern of bits of arbitrary length. There is no compulsion that the pattern of bits will have this particular length only. It is an arbitrary length pattern of bits. It is stuffed in the message to differentiate from the delimiter. So there is a particular pattern of bits which is stuffed in the message. It can be like 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Some, any such pattern would be stuffed within the actual message to differentiate from the delimiter and this is called bit oriented framing. So basically the concept in both these is stuffing some bits or bytes in the actual message to differentiate it from the uh, ending or starting delimiter bit pattern. So this is how you can identify the beginning and ending of a new frame. So this is all in framing.